to the Michigan Business Beat brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman, and we are in our downtown studios in Lansing, Michigan. We're going to kind of stay in the area right now, spend a little time with a good friend and uh, and uh, really a, a, a valuable source for us in this uh, cryptocurrency uh, area that uh, so many of us know so little about. David uh, Silva-Smith, he's a founder and managing director for the uh, Bitcoin Strategic Trading Fund. And uh, David, it's always good to have you on. How are you doing? Chris, I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, I know that. It uh, makes me <laughs> mad sometimes. <laughs> um, David, let's talk about uh, cryptocurrency. What, bring us up to date. Uh, how's Bitcoin doing? Um, uh, Ethereum and, and some of the others. Oh my gosh. Everybody always asks me about the price. And that's like, the, that's the thing I don't track, you know, every day, but um, it's, it's up probably about 10. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe two about, about where it was actually last year uh, at this time. And in uh, November, that's when it hit its highs. I think Bitcoin uh, almost touched 70,000. Then Bitcoin's around 47,000 today. Ethereum was like at 4,700 in November. Uh, today, Ethereum's around 3,400 or 3,600, I think. But, you know, it's really amazing uh, with all the turmoil we've been through, uh, you know, you know, with uh, wars and um, for, for a risk asset class to maintain in a lot of cases better than some of these publicly traded companies. Like um, uh, I think, I think Zoom got knocked down like 85% and, and there've been a number in that class and, and for cryptocurrency, you know, to be where it is and actually has been surging. And I think it's up about maybe 25% over the past two weeks. And that's pretty, pretty wild. Well, you know, it is. And it also points out uh, the fact that a lot of people now are on board. They're, they're, uh, they're believing in the, in the cryptocurrency economy. Uh, tell me a little bit about that, because I understand now um, big corporations have it on their asset sheets and they're also borrowing against it. Yeah, yeah. There's 27 publicly traded companies with about $10 billion in total of Bitcoin on their balance sheets. And, and you know, that's just, that's crazy. Uh, you, you know, Bitcoin went in such a short time, everybody was laughing at it. I think even up till probably 2016, you know, just five or six years ago. And, and now all of a sudden people are just jumping in, you know, big, huge companies are jumping in. We've seen it in the Super Bowl. We saw these, you know, huge ads, you know, it's, it, it's happening uh, in states, states and, and here in the U.S. states and our national government, you know, are looking to, to regulate it. There's 41 states right now who are working on or have passed, you know, regulations specific to cryptocurrencies, including right here in Michigan. There, the Senate proposed a bill, uh, number 888, I think in February, you know, to look into what can we do uh, with the cryptocurrency industry to promote it, you know, here in Michigan. You know, I think a lot of people are seeing this just like the internet and in that in the next few years, I'm going to see this industry explode and maybe maybe 20 years down the line you know if you look today at the 10 top 10 companies by market cap i think six to seven of those are, are internet companies and yeah. you know are we going to see that being you know crypto companies you know 10 20 years down the line it, it seems like it's headed that way well you know it's so interesting because um I, I every time the government starts on this regulation process I kind of duck my head, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like we're the government, we're here to help, you know? And I and I know yeah. it's necessary because there are things that can happen out there that are somewhat nefarious. But what do you think will happen when all of a sudden the SEC and, and others state by state come out with these regulations? I, th I think you're right on, Chris. I think it's a critical time. And, you know, th at the national level, there's an executive order. And at the state level, all these states are looking into it. And it could go a couple of ways. You know, they can get in there and they can hope stay, you know, help helpful regulations or stay out of the way, however you want to say it, or it could be really chilling. And there have been a couple, uh, I don't know if a tax is the right word, but, uh, but last year as part of that big transportation bill, you know, there was some concern that it was a, a shadow way to try to uh, eliminate cryptocurrency. Um, the SEC uh, was just, just trying to change a new rule definition that, uh, that could outlaw essentially uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, the, the European Union had an explicit one. It, well, actually, none of them are explicit. They're all like these like ways where they change definitions or they make this rule that, that sounds innocuous. But the, the effect is, is in a lot of cases to reduce or, or eliminate the ability for individuals or companies to use cryptocurrencies. And, and you know, so far, people have been fighting the good fight and, and none of these things have, have passed. So that's been good. But we don't know where it'll go. And, yeah. and Chris, I think, I think the part that worries me you know, if, you, if the U.S. banned the internet in the 90s because of fears of child pornography or, you know, some of the bad things that happened, I mean, can you imagine the U.S. today without the internet? 
And it's not that it wouldn't have happened. It just would have happened, you know, in the UK or in, or in Singapore or China or Africa or something like that. And I think that's the same thing with the cryptocurrency industry. Like it's going to happen. And it's just, is the U.S. going to be a leader in it or is somebody else going to, you know, take the mantle? Hey, listen quickly. Um, so what is, uh, first of all, I was going to say the more autocratic a regime or a government, the less they like cryptocurrency <laughs> because they can't really chart it and manage it as well as they want to. But let's talk about what's happening right now in the Ukraine. Is that affecting Bitcoin at all? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's pluses and minuses to there. So Ukraine, they, they've been ahead of the game. They have a, I, forget, I might get the name wrong, but it's like a, it's a Office of Innovation, Digital Innovation or something like that. And they've been really up on this cryptocurrency and they've been uh, accepting donations. I want to say it's like 100 million, maybe 150 million of, of donations have poured in there that have then went directly you know, to help in the effort over there. Uh, and I heard, I don't know if it's true, but that when you go through traditional means that uh, like 30 cents or 60 cents of all those dollars goes to administration and overhead versus this cryptocurrency. It's like, I don't know if it's 90 or 98% or, you know, some very high percentage and it's so fast. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, David Silva Smith, founder and managing director for the Bitcoin strategic trading fund. Thanks for being with us, buddy. It's always enlightening. Likewise, Chris. All right. We're going to be right back in the Michigan business beat on the Michigan business network. Stay with us. I'm Chris Holmes.